Hi, I am Jay Pathak and in this video, I will show you how to create this simple yet powerful transition for motion design in After Effects. So first, we start by creating a new solid by pressing Ctrl Y, then I'm going to duplicate this and then I'm going to press Ctrl Shift Y to open up the solid settings. Then I'm going to select the color that is lighter and then I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to go to Shape Layer Tool, choose Ellipse Tool and then I'm going to mask it okay then i'm going to feather it by pressing f and then just increasing the mask feather and then i'm going to just change these points okay now i'm going to lock them now i'm going to bring in the pawn and then i'm going to place it at the center okay now i'm going to duplicate this and then i'm going to replace it with king by pressing Alt and then dropping it on the pawn layer. Now I'm going to just make sure that both of them are aligned. Then I'm going to use the ruler to do so. And so this is a ruler and that point is going to be the point where everything should be aligned. Okay. And so I'm just adjusting this. Now I'm going to scale the king. Now I'm going to create a new null by pressing Ctrl Alt Shift Y. Then I'm going to recenter the anchor point of the null. And then I'm going to parent both of them to the null. Okay, this is going to be our scale controller layer. Okay, now I'm going to go to position. And then I'm going to go to 15 frames ahead by pressing Shift Page down and then 5 frames. And then I'm going to change the position of the middle keyframe. then I'm going to go 15 frames ahead copy the first keyframe and then paste it at that okay so we have a jump like this now I'm going to easy is that okay now I'm going to select them go to graph editor and then I'm going to just double click on it and make sure that the continuous is checked in and I'm going to change the graph to something like this okay now I'm going to go to pawn and then I'm going to uncheck or unlink and then I'm going to drop two keyframes on the scale property like this and then I'm going to change the second keyframe okay to something like this. Now I'm going to easy ease them okay and I'm going to just drag the handles like this. Now I'm going to drop a keyframe at the 5 frame. So I basically copy and pasted the first keyframe and then I'm going to adjust the position keyframe and then I'm going to adjust the anchor point at the bottom so that we can scale up really in a neat way because the anchor point has to be at the bottom since we are scaling from the bottom, okay? Now I'm going to change the scale of it, okay? You can do math in After Effects as well but it's I don't think it's really that important because I'm going to break this rule anyways. Now I'm going to adjust the keyframe like this. So we have some animation like this. Okay. Now I'm going to change this from 16 to 14. Okay. So we have an first animation like this. Now I'm going to adjust the keyframe like this. Now I'm going to turn on the king layer and turn off the pawn layer. And I'm going to drop the keyframes. And then I'm going to adjust the scale. But before that, I'm going to change the anchor point and then bring it at the bottom. Okay. So now I'm going to bring the king at the bottom. And then I'm just making sure that the king and pawn are both at the same size when it's starting, when the transition is starting. Okay. And so we have something that looks like this so I'm going to go to keyframe assistant and then easy ease then I'm going to go into the graph editor and then I'm going to make sure that the continuous is checked in you can open that menu by, by double clicking on the keyframe in the graph editor 
Okay, and the, make sure that your graph looks like this. Now I'm going to trim the layers by pressing this shortcut. So this process is basically a trial and error. Okay, it doesn't work the first time. You have to try different things. You have to try different timings. You have to try different keyframes, different methods. For no one, this works the first time. Now I'm going to increase the position prop uh, property because I think and then I'm going to decrease the scale, the final scale of the king layer. Okay, now I'm going to uncheck it and I'm going to drop another keyframe to exaggerate the transition that is going on here. So we have some animation like this. Now I'm going to go into graph editor and then I'm going to make sure that the graph looks like this. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the layers and see how it looks. Now I'm going to press U to bring up the keyframes on the pawn and then I'm going to adjust it and it looks something like this. Like I said, this is a trial and error, error process. This isn't set in stone. So you can, you have to move things around to get the timing right, to get the effect right sometimes. Okay, especially when you're dealing with animation like this, okay? Now I'm going to go back into the graph editor and then I'm going to adjust the handle like this until my graph looks something like this, okay? Now I'm going to adjust the scale for this and I'm going to exaggerate even further so that it looks natural but also like really fluid. Okay, I'm going to adjust the keyframes. And so we have an animation like this. Now I'm going to expand this layers and then cut this layer. Okay, so we have some animation like this. Now I'm going to go into the graph editor and then I'm going to change this graph because I want this animation to be really quick. Okay, it has to be, it, it's a drop, right? So it has to be really quick and it, it should appear as if the object has a heavy weight. Okay, and so I'm going to just adjust the scale of the pawn and then I'm going to place it at the end okay and so we have any animation like this now I'm going to play around with the timing of it until I get what I like okay So like I already said, this is a this this is basically a trial and error process. Okay, sometimes not everything works, and when it starts to work, everything works really really well. Okay. Now I'm going to change this to scale control, but it's position control. It's not scale control. I made a mistake there. Anyways, now. I'm going to start by adding text. So I'm going to select the text tool and then I'm going to type in the text, which is be the, and then I'm going to just add in the text, which is king after duplicating it. And then I'm going to change the fonts to human black. And then I'm going to rescale it until it fits. Now I'm going to select both of them and then place it below then I'm going to change the color of the king to something blue and then I'm going to change the scale of the B the now I have created a new composition which is 1920 by 1080 which is basically in landscape mode then I created this ellipse and then I recenter it. Then I'm going to go into ellipse and then I'm going to keyframe this size. I'm going to drop two keyframes first at the first frame and the second keyframe on the one second. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the first frame and change the keyframe size value to zero. Now I'm going to select both of them and then 
I'm going to easy ease and then I'm going to click on this so that I can see it clearly and then I'm going to adjust the handles like this okay now I'm going to go back now I'm going to set up a keyframe on stroke width so for at first frame and then I'm going to turn it to zero and then in between I'm going to exaggerate it okay so I'm going to t t uh, change it to something like 45 okay and so we have something like this okay really simple animation now I'm going to select this keyframes and then I'm going to easy ease them as well okay now I'm going to go into the graph editor and I'm going to make my graph look something like this I'm going to drag the handles like this and if you can't look at the graph just drag the handles in a way and so they will look something like this okay now I'm going to rename it I'm going to call it an ellipse and then I'm going to just hide it and then I'm going to create a stroke using pen tool I'm going to change the width stroke width and then I'm going to make sure that it is aligned to the center so I'm going to select it and then align it to the center now I'm going to go into contents and then I'm going to add in repeater okay and then once the repeater is added I'm going to open up the repeater menu and then I'm going to give 10 copies okay so as you can see that it has created 10 copies for me okay now once that is done I'm going to go into transform repeater 1 and then I'm going to change the position to 0 these are important steps by the way okay and then I'm going to add in an expression on the rotation property of the repeater okay so the expression is going to be 360 divided by number of the copies okay but I, I, I don't do that manually okay and so to do that what we are going to do is we are just going to create a bracket like this and then I'm going to just pick whip the copies property like this okay so when we change make changes to the copies it will update automatically okay anyways I'm going to keep it at 10 now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add in trim paths okay then I'm going to go to trim paths and then I'm, go I'm going to set up everything at 0 and then I'm going to set two keyframes at the first frame then for the reference I'm going to use ellipse and then I'm going to press U to see its keyframes and then I'm going to turn them both of them to 100 as well okay now I'm going to select the end keyframes and then I'm just going to offset them by few frames and so we have this animation okay now I'm going to turn on the circle and I'm going to see how it looks okay now I'm going to see the graph of the ellipse for the for the reference and then I'm going to make sure that the trim paths have the same graph okay so I'm going to easy ease them and then I'm going to one by one change the graph of them and align it with that of ellipse okay and so graph is really important and if you want to learn more about more in detail about how, how graph really works there is this course on my channel make sure that you see it because this this tutorial is quite rushed I'm just telling you what to do but I'm not telling you why we do what we do so if you want to learn why we do what we do then there is this course okay make sure that you see that now I'm going to just resize it but as you can see it is getting resized from the anchor point so I'm going to recenter the anchor point by pressing this shortcut and then I'm going to rescale it then I'm going to play with the width of the layer now I'm going to turn the cap into round cap okay 
So we have something like this. Now I'm going to go into the main composition. I'm going to bring in the circle burst in the main composition. And then I'm going to just turn on, press U to see the references on the scale control which should be position, position control. Then I'm going to turn the circle burst into a 3D layer. And then I'm just going to change the X rotation value on the circle burst until it looks convincing. Okay, but first of all I'm going to offset it in a way that it matches it at the, the timing matches. Okay, so this looks nice but I'm still not convinced with the rotation. Okay, so I'm going to just change the rotation until it looks convincing to me. Okay, I think minus 76 should look just right and this looks really nice. Okay, and then I'm going to just scale it up and then I'm going to select the this layer and then I'm going to just increase raise that. Now I'm going to apply and fill effect and then I'm going to change it to something like yellow. Now I'm just I'm going to go back into that circle burst composition and then I'm going to make few changes here. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the main composition by pressing tab and then I'm going to see how it looks. Now I'm going to duplicate it and offset it by few frames and then I'm going to change the color of it. So we have something like this. Now I'm going to go back into the composition and then I'm going to play with the graph because we have to make sure that the graph is aligned with the motion, original motion. So I'm going to easy ease again to reset the graph and then I'm going to just push this handle and my graph would look like this. And I'm going to make sure that every graph looks like this. And I'm going to reset this again by just easy easing it. I'm going to reset both of them. Okay, now I'm going to start making change to both of them. Okay, it, it has to look something like this. Okay, just push the handles like this and it will look like this. Graph is the most important part if you want to make convincing motion. Okay. And so we have one and we have the animation here. Now I'm going to just adjust it accordingly. And then I'm going to increase the size of it. And then I'm going to just change the mask to something like this. Now I'm going to go back into the circle burst composition and then I'm going to decrease the time between both of them. Okay. Because this might be too long. Okay, and to decrease the time, all you have to do is just hold the keyframe and then press Alt and then drag them like this. Okay. It has to be quick, right? It has to be quick. Okay, see, this is quick. And now I'm just testing things here. What works, what doesn't work. Okay, now I'm going to go into the circle burst composition and I'm just going to offset this and keyframes so that it ends earlier because previously it looked as if it ended, it, take it, it, it took longer than it should. Okay. And so this is it, but I made few changes after recording and that was I added Triton effect to both this king layer and the pawn layer to make sure that both of them looked alike. And if you want the project file, the project file is in the description. I'll see you. Bye.